Hi, in this video you'll learn how to use the central limit theorem to determine the distribution of the difference of two sample means and then we'll actually compute a probability for the difference of two sample means. So here's the situation. Uh, there's a lot of words here so I highlighted what's important to us to do this probability problem and then I stripped away the words and just put uh, the important parts, um, the components of this problem onto the next slide. So right now I'll just read the, read the entire example and then we'll go down to the stripped down version of the problem. The life of a component used in a jet turbine aircraft engine is a random variable with a mean of 5,000 hours and a standard deviation of 40 hours. The distribution of this life is fairly close to a normal distribution. Now this, this is going to be very important to us in order to use the central limit theorem. If the original distribution is already fairly close to normal, then the distribution of the sample mean um, should also follow a normal distribution for a sample size that doesn't have to be um, really, really large. Even a sample size perhaps of 10 would give a, an X bar of a normal distribution. Okay, let me continue. The engine manufacturer introduces an improvement into the manufacturing process for this component that increases the mean life to 5,050 hours, but also decreases the standard deviation to 30 hours. Okay, so we want to really test to see, um, you know, when we made this improvement then, is the new lifetime of the component um, better than the lifetime of this old, old component? So what we're going to do, we're going to grab a random sample of 16 components uh, from the old process and another random sample of 25 components from the improved process. Uh, and last, what we'll do then is determine uh, what's the probability that the difference in the two sample means is at least 25 hours? And in order to do this problem, we're going to assume the old and improved processes can be regarded as independent populations. And so what that means is um, the lifetime of an old component does not affect the probability of the new component having a, a, a shorter or longer lifetime. The lifetimes are actually independent of each other. Something happening with the old uh, component does not affect how the new component is going to work. Um, independent. Okay, so um, I took away all the the story and just gave us the bare bones of the problem. Um, so again, we're told the lifetime, and I'm just going to call it the old component and the new component, the new component being after the process was improved. So the lifetime of the component as it originally was, and let's call this lifetime x1, just so we have a random variable for it. Um, the lifetime of the old component was 5,000 hours with a standard deviation of 40 hours, and again we said the original distribution of the lifetime is close to normal. Um, the lifetime of the new component, and let's call that random variable x2, this is lifetime of new component, uh, mu is 5050 and a standard deviation of 30 hours. So we're going to grab a random sample and one of 16 of the old components and 25 of the new components. Uh, we're going to look at the lifetime then of x bar 2 minus x bar 1. Uh, we're going to go into this problem assuming that uh, the old and the new component lifetimes are independent. If we didn't have independence, we wouldn't actually be able to do this problem. Uh, and, and then finally, what we're going to do is determine a probability. So let's, there's lots still going in on here, so let's just do this in pieces. Um, let's first find uh, the mean lifetime of the old component and the mean lifetime of the new component. So this is what I mean. So let x bar 1 be the sample mean of the lifetime of the old component. So this is what I was saying in the very first slide. Um, since the lifetime of the old component is fairly close to normal, then even with a random sample of 16, x bar 1 is going to have a normal distribution. So if you already start out fairly close to normal, you can choose a smaller sample size and still make the assumption that x bar 1 will be normal. And I'm invoking the central limit theorem to do this. So x bar 1, uh, it is normal by the central limit theorem. The mean of x bar 1 is going to be the mean of the original lifetime of the old component, which is 5,000 hours. 
and let's see here, a sigma of x bar 1 is going to be the old standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size that we're taking, which is 16. So let's see, 40 divided by 4 then is 10 hours. So we know the distribution then of x bar 1. It's normal, mean 5,000 or 5,000 hours, standard deviation 10 hours. Let's also get the distribution of x bar 2. And again, if uh, x bar 1 was normal, uh, we have to believe that x bar 2 would be normal. Here we're taking a sample size of 25 even more. So by the central limit theorem, we have normality. Um, mu of x bar 2 will be the same as the original mean of the new component lifetime, which is 5,050 hours. And the standard deviation will be the original standard deviation for the distribution, which was 30 hours, divided by the square root of the sample size. Here is 25. So if we divide this out, this will be 6 hours. So now we have x bar 1, we have its distribution, we have x bar 2, we have its distribution. And in order to solve this problem, determine this probability, we're going to need to know the distribution of x bar 2 minus x bar 1. So let's go ahead and do that on the next page. Okay. So again, the old and new component lifetimes are assumed to be independent. That's going to be important in this part of the problem. And we want to determine the distribution of x bar 2 minus x bar 1 so we can go ahead and solve this problem. So I rewrote here what we found out on the previous page, x bar 1, its distribution, and x bar 2, its distribution. So the distribution of the difference of x bar 2 and x bar 1 is normal. And that's simply because um, this is just a linear combination of random variables. x2 bar is normal, x2 bar 1 is, or x bar 2, x bar 1 are both normal, so definitely their distribution is normal. Now, uh, to totally finish off this distribution, we need to know the mean and the variance. So the mean of this distribution here will be the mean of x bar 2 minus the mean of x bar 1. And recall, the mean of x bar 2 is 5,050. Um, mean of x bar 1, 5,000. So this is 50 hours. OK. And now we want the variance. And recall that we are not allowed to add standard deviations. So even though we're given the standard deviations for x bar 1 and x bar 2, we're allowed to add variances as long as we have independence. And this is where the independence clause comes in. So to find the variance of the 2, I'm just going to add uh, the variance of x bar 2 and the variance of x bar 1. OK, so this is going to be uh, 6 squared plus 10 squared is 136 hours squared. And so now uh, we know the distribution of x bar 2 minus x bar 1. It's normal with a mean of 50 hours and a standard deviation of the square root of 136 hours. OK, now we can actually finish off this problem. So last thing we want to do is find the probability that x bar 2 minus x bar 1 is greater than or equal to 25. And this becomes an easy problem then because we know the distribution of x bar 2 minus x bar 1. So let's finish this off on the next page. Um, again, we know this distribution. We set it. So let's go ahead and find this probability. So the probability of x bar 2 minus x bar R1 is greater than or equal to 25. Well, what I'm going to do then is just convert this to a z-score. Um, I'm going to convert it to a, a normal 0, 1, and then look at the standard normal table to find the probability. So this is the probability that z, so when we're replacing x bar 1 with minus x bar 2 with z, we'll recall z is just the standard normal random variable. So I'm saying z has the distribution of a normal random variable with mu equals 0 and sigma equal 1. I'm just doing the conversion so we can use our standard normal table to find um, the probability that we're going to uh, be looking for at the, at the end of this problem. So greater than or equal to 25 minus, so we take the number, we take the value, right, to standardize or, or convert to a z-score. We take the value, we subtract off the mean of the distribution, and then we divide by the standard deviation of the distribution. And this is the mean and the standard deviation of this distribution. 
Okay, so that's going to give us the probability that z is greater than negative 2.14. Okay, and again, we can go to the standard normal table to determine this probability. And I did that, and this is approximately uh, 0.9. 9838. So the probability that the lifetime, the mean lifetime x bar 2 um, minus x bar 1 is greater than 25 is uh, quite likely to be true. I mean, the probability of that occurring is around 98%. Uh, I, I went ahead and drew this picture. This is the distribution of x bar 2 minus x bar 1, just so we could look at the original problem before we did the conversion. We wanted to find the probability that this is going to be greater than 25. So if you see here, here's about 25 on the distribution of x bar 2 minus x bar 1. And we're finding the probability that x bar 2 minus x bar 1 is greater than or equal to 25. So that's this area under the curve. And that's what we just found. So this area then is 0.9838. So we did a lot in this problem. Uh, we used we used a lot of facts from you know previous sections. We used our standard normal. Um, we needed independence to combine uh, the variance for the linear combination of random variables. Uh, we used the central limit theorem to be able to say that x bars. Uh, had a normal distribution. So I think this was a really great practice problem because it had so many elements to it of things that we're either now just discussing or have discussed in previous sections. So I hope you see how we use the central limit theorem. Um, it's really the backbone of statistical theory. And then we've used some other properties that we've talked about throughout the course. So um, I hope this makes sense and uh, we'll be talking soon. Okay, thanks.